Should most people handle rattlesnakes? Absolutely not. These snakes are potentially dangerous to humans, and so if you're gonna work with them professionally, you have to make sure you have the right equipment. So we use tools 100% of the time. Snake hooks, tongs, gaiters to protect our, our feet and legs, always wearing boots and long pants. We want to protect ourselves and others who might encounter snakes, and so we do it in a professional way. And what you see today in this video, yeah, it's risky, but we're professionals, and we hope that you absolutely do not try this at home. Today we're going to be working with Johnny Cash, and Johnny Cash is a Western Diamondback rattlesnake, Crotalus atrox. He's about 10 years old, weighs about 10 pounds, and he's a big boy. We're going to show you this amazing snake up close, be able to see his body, his rattle, and you can get to see us working with a large venomous snake. And so again, he's a very large animal that has a little bit of an attitude, and so we want to make sure that we're safe at all times. Let's go. nothing to do with us whatsoever. My eyes are going to be focused on him all the time, and now we're going to get him into a tube so we can so safely perform a health check. So let's do that. So now that Johnny Cash is safely strained in the tube, so we use one big tube that is larger than his body, so that we're able to kind of get an easier fit. But then we use the second tube here to make sure that he 100% cannot back up. And so this is the safest way that we're able to assess his body condition. So we can look at his, his face up close. We can look at his, um, his scale, see if there's any discoloration or anything that needs to be paid attention to. But we can also just give him a physical examination. So this would be an opportunity for us to maybe measure him. Um, if we wanted to weigh him, we would need to put him in a bag or a box to weigh him. So we wouldn't do that now. But just an overall looking at his body condition. So you can see he's quite upset, right? And so rattlesnakes are not pancakes. Uh, they're not supposed to be this flat. But this is his way of showing us like, I'm a big snake, don't mess with me. I will do everything in my power to defend them, myself. But this, this flattening out is a way that they're able to, you can see just how flat he is. I mean, he is stretching his whole body out, really just trying to, uh, you know, look as big as possible. And so I mentioned that Johnny Cash was an older rattlesnake, he's 10 years old. He's got this giant rattle. You can just see how big it is. But he's got more than 10 rattles on there, busting that myth that you can tell the age of a rattlesnake by looking at each segment in its tail. Now, if that was the case, you know, Johnny Cash would be, you know, really old, right? But no, every time he sheds his skin, he is going to get a new segment on the rattle. So Johnny Cash has this gorgeous skin, hard scales, heel scales, and they help protect him in a kind of arid, deserty environment. So he is very, very strong, right? And so that keeps him safe from predators. That coloration helps him blend into a variety of different habitats, mostly arid environments. Johnny Cash, again, is a Western Diamondback rattlesnake, and they have this characteristic black and white banded tail. This sometimes gives them the nickname the raccoon-tailed rattlesnake, but quite beautiful, to say the least. So if you're ever bitten by a rattlesnake, it's really important to act quickly. So with a rattlesnake bite, time is tissue, and the longer you wait to get to a hospital to receive life-saving antivenom, 
the uh, worse the damage is gonna be. Really, the most important thing is to get to the hospital as soon as possible. Have someone else drive you or call 911. That's always gonna be the better thing to do. Then give Poison Control a call and they'll help make sure that wherever you're going, anti-venom will be there. So we have some wonderful replica snake fangs that were donated to us by the Biophilia Group, who are great friends of Save the Snakes. And these replicas are really incredible, but they can show us what a venomous snake fangs are like. And so here is actually a Fertilance, both Rops Osper, and this would have the same type of fang structure that a rattlesnake would have. Rattlesnakes and Fertilance are pit vipers, and they get their name because they have that nice heat pit, which allows them to sense heat in the environment. But they also are front fanged, or hinged front fang snakes, which is Selenoglyphus. So what they're able to do is actually fold this fang um, to the back of their mouth to keep it inside of their mouth. But you can kind of see here we have the venom gland and passes through the venom duct into the fang to show you a little bit more what these fangs are like up close. You can see that the venom comes down, 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 and it's actually injected right there. So here's the tip of the fang, and then they have a little point at the end, and it's just like a hypodermic needle. If we compare between a pit viper, like this Fertilance, and a non-venomous snake, which in this example, this is a, uh, a Cribo, which is a South American constricting snake. No fangs at all, but they have rows of teeth. And so we call non-venomous snakes aglyphous snakes, but even venomous snakes do have recurved teeth, um, but they're lacking the fangs. So at the Snake Conservation Center, and in general working with rattlesnakes, uh, our team is incredibly safe. You may have noticed that I'm not opening the cage with my hands, I'm not using my hand to close the bucket lid, I'm only using tools. So we put the snakes in the buckets so that we can safely you know, move them from place to place. Uh, if we had to leave the center, we would even go far as to put them in a pillowcase and then put them in another container so as the animal being double contained Safety is number one, and so we never want there to be a mistake where someone, you know, opens a bucket and then there's just a free range of rattlesnake. But for this, you know, showcasing these rattlesnakes here, um, we can just, you know, have the snakes in the bucket and then quickly transport them. So this is Dorado, and Dorado is a northern Pacific rattlesnake. Um, he is a spectacular educational animal at our facility. So you can see that he is very mellow, wonderful to work with, but I would never take any chances, right? And so this animal, again, highly venomous, but as far as we can tell, it's an adult male, probably getting up there in age, but very, very pleasant to work with. And you're looking beautiful, you just shed your skin. This here is one of our educational animals, Tesoro. And Tesoro is letting me know that I'm way too close to her. So she's an adult female Northern Pacific rattlesnake. And she was actually rescued from somebody's home. Fortunately, the snake was in a spot that it really shouldn't have been. And it was unable to be released back out in the wild for a variety of circumstances. And so it ended up at our facility here. 
And so Tesoro helps us educate lots of people about rattlesnakes and how to coexist with these amazing animals. She's about three and a half feet long. And you can see that rattle, right? So that is their warning to let us know that we are way too close. It's one of the best anti-predator warning systems in the world. So whether you're a little predator or a big, you know, bison or elk that's wandering too close, that rattlesnake is going to let you know that, you know, hey, keep an eye out. I'm here. Please don't step on me. Don't eat me. I will defend myself if I have to. This is June, one of our Western Diamondback rattlesnakes. And she's about one year old. June here helps us not only educate the public about rattlesnakes and their importance, but also helps people learn to coexist with these animals. So many times you can find rattlesnakes in military installations in the American Southwest and other parts of the United States, energy sector, so on solar fields, wind farms, there's many different ways that people encounter rattlesnakes in the job. We help people to learn how to safely get them out of a work area through our venomous snake training program. Rattlesnakes are one of the most interesting pit vipers in the world, and they can be found throughout North, Central, and South America. So I've got my binoculars, I've got a snake stick, I'm ready to spend some time outdoors. So it's really important as we're enjoying nature that you stay on the path as much as possible. By being aware of your surroundings, you'll make sure to see a rattlesnake, and then sometimes that rattlesnake will let you know it's coming too. It might give you a little bit of buzz, but sometimes they actually don't do that. So it's really important to look where you're putting your feet, stay on the path, and you know, try not to venture too far from the trail because you don't want to bump into a snake accidentally.